So this is the famous chicken 65. It looks red, but it's a pot of gold or the plate of gold here when you come to Buhari in Chennai. Huh? Ah, the bird is nice and juicy inside. What I also like is that you're biting into more of the filling than the outermost layer of that samsa. Mm. The flavour that you taste in this bun is quite akin to what you would taste in a mawa cake, of course at a much lighter level. I think this biryani comes alive when tasting the rice in combination with the meat. Somewhere there I can also now taste a bit of the heat that comes from the red chilli powder. So I think this is a biryani that slowly works its magic. Namaskara folks, this is Kripal Mana Gourmet on the road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and strong. Well, we're in Chennai and when it comes to the South Eden equivalent, of the ubiquitous chicken tikka of the north, well, it's a chicken 65. And we are here at the spot where that chicken 65 was first made, was first invented in the year 1965. We are here at Buhari's in Mount Road, Anasalai. Namaskar, sir. Uh, how are you doing? Good, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Afsan. Jaha pe bhi jao, you get the chicken 65. Yes. Right, but I'm told this is where it began. Yeah, January 1st of uh, 1965. Yeah. Grandfather, eh, Buhari, founder of Buhari, he planned to introduce a new dish for the new year. Okay. We didn't keep any name. We just made it and gave to all the guests. Suddenly one foreign guest asked the name of the dish. He uh. liked it very much. On the spot, Grandfather told the chicken 65. Ah, so that name yeah. stuck. Yeah. I was reading up on Buhari. And I'm told this restaurant opened in the 50s. Before independence, we had uh, the first branch in Colombo. Oh, really? In Sri Lanka, yeah. Okay. It was started there. Uh -huh. uh, after independence, uh, all our people uh, came back to India. Okay. So when we came back, we started this branch here in 1951. Uh -huh. At that time, compared to other places, this was very premium. Uh -huh. uh, fantastic. I'm also told that there are many firsts that have been recorded at Buhari, uh -huh. including the first coffee making machine and things like yeah. that. I also read somewhere that when they opened the restaurant, the China uh, was imported from Great Britain. Yeah, yeah. Correct? Yeah, bone China was imported. Bone China was imported. Well, that's the history, that's the legacy of this eatery that goes back to the early 50s. Yeah. So, what other dishes that I should be trying here? People have said the bun butter. Bun butter jam is a signature dish. Special recipe. We produce the own uh, bun. It will be different from the other local buns. Okay. The taste will be good. Uh, the jam is homemade and the butter is a uh, little different. You can try it. Chicken 65 you can try. Okay. You can try wheat parota. Wheat parota. Silonic parota. So, the Silon parota again was first made here, is it? Yeah, it was famous, very famous here. Famous here. Yeah. And obviously uh, because of the legacy uh, from the Sri Lanka. From Sri Lanka. So, we're going to hopefully try and partake of some of these dishes during our evening here. Well, we are seated in the main dining area of Buhari. There are multiple dining areas now. There's also an air-conditioned section next door and a new launch recently called the Mughal, which is also part of the group. I'm told it's fine dining, but I wanted to sit in the place where things began. And I was just reading an article online as I was doing my research on Buhari. And it says, when Buhari Hotel on Anasalai threw its gates open to the public in 1951, it ushered in a number of firsts. Espresso machines making cup after cup of steaming coffee, a jukebox playing tunes of the time, and cutlery and crockery brought from London to give a fine dining experience to Madras foodies. So that's the legacy of the place and I'm guessing that's the beginning that has helped it thrive over the last 75 years of its existence. Hello, how are you? Yes, so I think we should make a beginning with the bun butter jam. Yeah, right? bun butter jam. Then we should definitely try the 65 also. I also want to try uh, the, the parota, Ceylon parota. Yeah. That is also special here. Special. Invented here. Yeah. Ah. 
In Bawari only. Silon egg parotta. Choice of meat. So what meat will you give me that with? Mutton is special. Mutton is special. Okay. Okay. So bring us that to begin with. Then we'll do the parotta, no? Parotta. Yeah. And then we'll do the sixty-five and biryani. Biryani. Mutton biryani. Mutton biryani. There's also something called the Bawari's chicken ninety. Ninety is a boneless. Chicken sixty is with pork with four pieces. Ha. Oil fried. And even that is oil fried? No, not oil fried. Butter fried. Butter fried. Yeah. Chicken sixty-five, nineteen sixty-five. 1990 chicken 90 oh that was invented in 1990 yeah, yeah. so you basically named the dishes after the year it was invented so we will also try that yeah. it's always nice to take a look at the menu because suddenly you will find something so i heard about the 65 and the biryani but i didn't know there was something called the 90 the chicken buhari chicken 92 atun samsa Bun butter jam. Thank you very much. Some chai. Well, we're making a beginning with some uh, tea. And I'm told the tea here is a specialty too. Ah, I thought it looked a little milky, but it's got a flavor that's quite similar to the Dhamka chai that you get in Hyderabad. You can certainly taste the strength of the tea even through the milk. Ah, I'm not sure but some spices perhaps that goes into it. The one thing that I don't like in tea is some malai. Ah, it's always nice when you walk into an eatery that you are not very familiar with and the first thing that touched your lips reassures you that you've made the right selection. And on that note, I'm going to turn my gaze to that bun butter jam. This I'm told is a classic. The bun is made by them. The jam that you see in here, which is a mixed fruit preserve, is also made by them. The butter perhaps is sourced, but it's a very different sort of a butter. It looks more like the white butter as opposed to the commercial butter that you get elsewhere. And that preserve too, that jam too, looks rather thick and jellyish in its appearance. Also a bun that seems rather rich. Mm. I'm also tasting the crystalline crunch of sugar. I don't know if it's in the preserve or is it in the butter, but that does wonderful to contrast in its texture with the softness of that bun. Mm. The flavor that you taste in this bun is quite akin to what you would taste in a mawa cake. Of course, at a much lighter level. Delicious. So I'm told for most Chennaiites, when they come here in the evening, this is a staple order. You order for a chai and one of these. Mm. That certainly hits the spot. Also, the butter is there to lend itself. But it's not overly buttery in the least. I think there's a nice balance that you find between the soft richness of the bread, the crystalline sweetness of that mixed fruit jam, and a very light whale of the white butter. For some reason, when I sip on the tea after tasting the bun butter jam, the tea seems a little hotter to the palate. Definitely something that you should try when you find yourself at Buhari. I think sometimes the simplest of food, the simplest of dishes, the simplest of assemblages give you the most satisfaction. Mm, I think you also bit into some raisin in that bun there. Mm. And how about some of that mutton samsa? It's not a typical samosa pastry. The casing is quite thin, quite translucent, almost phyllo like in its uh, appearance and I'm sure in its texture too. Mm. You can taste the minced meat right away, the flavor of the meat and alongside it, a bit of the spice that perhaps comes from some green chilli or red chilli powder, I'm not sure. But quite surely, the freshness of some coriander or perhaps some mint. What I also like is that you're biting into more of the filling than the outermost layer of that samsa. I think next we should call for the 6590 and the biryani. 
How was the biryani? Good. Idi apam biryani. It was good. Yeah. Awesome. I was eyeing a biryani on that table, and I inquired on that biryani, and I'm told that's a idi apam biryani, a string hopper biryani. So perhaps something to keep in mind for the next time I'm here. I think places like these, if you want to really know what the food's all about, you need to visit more than once. So for today, I wanted to focus on. the dishes that are iconic here whether it's a bun butter jam the mutton samosa or the tea and next of course the 6590 and the biryani but i also spot in this menu dishes that i may want to explore in the future so for instance that idiyapam biryani that the gentleman on that table was savoring the mutton vindalu because that's a dish that you don't typically find elsewhere and i'm also told there are a few other popular dishes here like the buhari chicken kurma etc i think what makes places like these special also is the fact that because they've been around for the last 70 75 years they've had cooks who have worked for decades perhaps some of them have passed on but i'm hoping that some of the recipes that they mastered over the years have perhaps been shared with those in charge of the kitchen now i was also looking forward to visiting the kitchen and taking a look at how the dishes are prepared but because we dropped in rather unexpectedly they haven't had time to prepare at the back But I'm sure the next time around we'll also get a peek into the kitchen and perhaps the making of one or two of the dishes. Mutton biryani. Chicken 65. Boneless, whole pizza and chili and mayonnaise. Just the butter. Sorted in butter. Sorted in butter. So this chicken 65 what you get in other places has a lot of curry leaf and all of that. No curry leaf you don't use. So what goes into this masala is? Yeah, the special spice mix. Of course, what a secret, Oga. Yeah. And then it's coated, marinated uh, with curd, yogurt, with curd. and only fried once, not double fried. Oh, single fried. So this is the famous chicken 65. It looks red, but it's a pot of gold or the plate of gold here when you come to Buhari in Chennai, huh? Well I think time to keep aside the samosa chai and the remnant of the bun butter jam and focus on what's in front of us the chicken 65 the chicken 90 and the mutton biryani and an interesting thing that I discovered about this bun butter jam especially with respect to the butter because I thought the butter was white butter and also quite light in its texture and don't they take the amul butter and then they churn it such that the color of the butter i am told turns white and the salt gets removed because when i tasted the butter the butter also seemed rather airy rather frothy in its texture either it was home churned butter but that's the way they do it and i think that also aids the taste of that bun butter jam enough talking about all this let's get on to the main act the other interesting thing out here with the chicken 65 You know you see many recipes of the chicken 65 online and elsewhere but this is where the chicken 65 was invented in the year 1965 so in the recipes that one sees online you see the chicken being of course coated in the batter the batter probably has a chili powder some spices coriander powder perhaps some cumin etc but out here the recipe is fairly simple they make a batter with the yogurt with some red chilies with some coriander powder some spices etc there's no curry leaf that's used in the chicken 65 here they marinate the bird and as and when they get the order they deep fry it and send it out the bird is fried only once and not twice like you would typically find in 65 recipes that you will see online and this is a creation of the restaurant in 1990 because they wanted to create a chicken appetizer dish for children and so that's when they stumbled upon this so chicken here is fried in a batter it looks a little lighter than the masala that you see here once it's fried and again it's tossed in some butter with some chilies etc which is what makes the 90 I am looking forward to tasting that chicken 65. Ah, the bird is nice and juicy inside. Mm. There's a bit of lime too that I'm tasting in that chicken. So perhaps once it's cooked, there's a drizzle of lime that goes on top. What's nice is that the outer part has formed a nice crust, while on the inside, that bird is still moist and juicy. and quite literally the sort that slides off the bone i think what also happens is with the marinade with the yogurt and the spices i think the acids in the yogurt also in a certain manner 
ट्रांसफॉर्म द टेक्सचर ऑफ द चिकन तो द टेक्सचर ऑफ चिकन इज अट दैट इज अ बिट डेंस बट इन अ गुड वे I don't know if the color comes from the red chili powder or if there's some food color that goes into it. Perhaps Mr. Abzal may be able to shed some light on that. Certainly, is a chicken that makes you want to reach for a second piece. You can also taste a hint of the ginger garlic in that marinade. Mm, I quite love the texture of that chicken. The classic dishes are always very simple in their approach. They don't try to use too many ingredients. The flavors of the sort that are clean and simple. I think more than the number of ingredients that go in. I think it's more about the technique that goes into the making of the marinade, perhaps. Because even in terms of the warmth, there's just a little bit of the warmth that you're tasting. Somewhere you can sense a bit of the ginger garlic, not very overtly, but you know there's a ginger garlic that's gone into it. And even the chili powder that goes in, perhaps, to color this bird, is a sort that leaves a lingering sort of a warmth. on the tip of your tongue it's not overly done in any form or fashion mm. the sort of chicken dish where you want to make sure that you get into every crevice of this bone and pry off all flesh what's also nice is a bits that's holding on to more than its share of the masala I think let's turn our attention now to that chicken 90 a dish that was made apparently to give the kids something to chew on but I'm not so sure if the kids would have been too happy about the chili the deep fried chili hmm I'm told that the boneless chicken kebab for want of a better word aap is deep fried is tossed in butter with the chilies and i can taste a bit of the butter in that chili so you can taste a bit of the smokiness there is that spice that you certainly taste in the back of your throat but what you taste first is the flavor of the smoked butter mm. in this chicken you can definitely taste a little more of the batter i don't know perhaps some uh, rice flour that goes in i'm not sure what goes in to thicken that batter you can certainly taste it and you can also see it cooking that chicken I can only taste a bit more of the slight stodginess of the batter in this uh, chicken 90. Let's taste now with some of that mayo. Hmm, the mayo is sweetish, has a bit of warmth, but is more sweet than hot, and that basically helps take away a bit of the red chili spice that you can taste in that. So I guess children will like this chicken 90, but most adults, I suspect, would head to the chicken 65. Time to turn our gaze to that mutton biryani. So the biryani is pasted with some egg. There's some basmati rice. I don't know how many pieces of meat. Maybe about two or three pieces of meat. I'm not sure. How many pieces of meat do you have in this? There's one on my plate. There's one here, and uh, the third piece. Three pieces of mutton in your plate of biryani. I think let's also get some of that yogurt raita. Quite solid. quite held together that yogurt that curd and i'm told this is some sort of a mango based condiment that's had as a combination to the biryani first the biryani chawal mm. very smoky to the first bite you can definitely taste the savory character of the fried onions in that biryani the seasoning too is rather light it's not the sort of biryani that creates a huge explosion of flavors on your palate in fact it gently eases its way onto your taste buds what i'm tasting primarily is the flavor that comes from the fried onions and now somewhere i'm beginning to register the warmth perhaps of some cloves there's tomatoes too that go into this biryani as one can see in the slivers that are holding on to pieces of the meat but it doesn't really make its acidic presence too obvious let's now taste some of that meat mm. the meat is soft and the little biryani comes alive when tasting the rice in combination with the meat somewhere there i can also now taste a bit of the heat that comes from the red chili powder so i think this is a biryani that slowly works its magic The rice in this biryani is also the sort that's a bit moist to the touch. You know, when it comes to biryanis, we we'll have different kinds of biryanis. Mm. 
that onion raita is quite nice. There's also a hint of sweetness that I'm tasting. Perhaps some sugar that goes into that yogurt. So I'm saying when it comes to biryani, there are those who like their biryani to give them a jhatka, a zor ka jhatka. This biryani isn't one of them. This is a biryani that's quite gentle, quite mellow in the manner that it rings on your palate. And I suspect that's the style of cooking here. Be it in the bun butter jam or the mutton samsa that I tasted or even that chicken 65. I thought the flavors here were the sort that were quite restrained and the cooks perhaps careful in not wanting the spices to outshine the overall dish. I think now let's taste some of that mango. Mm. This almost tastes like a bit of a sweet mango pickle. I don't even think it's mango, it's perhaps date. I get the feeling that there's some dates that have gone into this along with some jaggery or sugar and some pickling spices. What is this? This is mango sweet. Sorry. Mango, mango sweet. Mango and dates. Mm. Dates also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Some pickling spices are there yeah, in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must say that this biryani is also the sort that registers its weight on your tummy. If you've had that bun butter jam or the mutton samsa and also the 65, two pieces of the 65, you can forget about finishing that biryani by yourself. So when you come here and if you want to taste all these dishes, find a willing partner. Having said that, this is clearly a biryani that will appeal to you more and more with every passing morsel and now as I'm getting to the core of this piece of meat I can also see some fat as I would say in Tamil some kulpu sticking to that meat and I suspect that's going to be extremely flavorful mm. Mm. basically maida some eggs and the mutton mince inside I can see plenty of tomatoes there perhaps some coriander, plenty of onions too. And this I'm told is also a speciality of the house. The top layer of the parotta is quite thin. The bottom layer is a little thick. Mm. The sweetness of the onions that comes through in this Ceylon parotta. I think this is some ketchup. I think I'm better off tasting that Ceylon parotta by itself. I'm also registering the sweetness that comes from the onions. What I'm a fan of, of the dishes that I tasted here, is the deft hands that go to spice all the dishes. Even in this salon parotta, you're tasting a bit of the warmth that comes perhaps from some red chilli powder, but that's then very quickly contrasted by the sweetness that you taste in the onions and a bit of the fat that's rendered into that mutton mince. You can clearly tell that these are dishes that belong to an era when life was simple, when people didn't need to do much to attract customers to their dishes. The flavors are simple, the food is prepared well, there are dishes that are iconic, dishes that have made history and served to you in an atmosphere that transports you back to the good old yesteryear. And I think that's the reason why 75 years from the time that it first opened doors, Buhari restaurant here in Mount Road, Anas Salai, is still as relevant. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gourmet on the Road. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating. Oh, Kasata. This is made here. We have the ice cream, uh, actually we have. Yeah. Well, the good thing about a cassata is that in one ice cream, you have multiple flavors. And this is some orange. Mm. There's some dates that I can taste in that uh, orange ice cream. Mm. Also, I think something caramelized, I'm not sure. Some tutti fruity as well. From the orange, we find our way to the vanilla. What's there not to like in an ice cream? Especially as you wind things down after a big meal here in Chennai.
Well, all that we've tasted, the cassata, the bun butter jam, the salonic paratha, the 65, the 90, the mutton dum biryani, the samsa and the chai for all of rupees 1700. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!